Five for Great Britain, number five, Tony Woolard in the starting rotation. Number seven, Mark Cheney. Number eight, Simon Munn. Number 10, Nigel Smith. And number 13, Joe Gerontne. And off the tip, Great Britain takes over and the ball stolen by France. Coming up the floor, Philippe Bay sends that pass over to Abu Kanate, an impressive player with all kinds of speed and skill. Pass inside to Bruno Godefroy, can't get the ball to fall. And the Brits are there to haul in the board. I think we're going to see an awful lot out of uh, number six. Uh, he really uh, changed the game against Canada, and he's a, a pain in the neck out there if you're playing against him. And I think you're right, gentlemen. The thing that has to happen here is that Great Britain can't be loose on the turnovers. They just committed one major turnover and missed an easy shot. If they're going to win this game, they've got to be consistent and accurate. And there's Philippe Newton sends a pass to Bay. He's guarded closely. Nice pass inside for Konate, who can't get the ball to fall, and the British break back up the floor. We've played a minute here in our first semifinal game, Great Britain taking on France. Joe Giratne and Mark Cheney exchange passes. Long pass inside for Simon Munn, and the sumo man gets our first points of the ball game. Great Britain on top, 2-0. Full court press now. You can see that both teams are moving quickly into the inside. Great Britain is trying to use the advantage of their big man. And they did in that instance, and I think the foul was called against the Frenchman. We have an equipment timeout. We uh, have to take one of your men off while a substitution would take place. Here's that uh, movement here, coming down, taking the ball back, and reverse himself. See, that's the amazing thing, uh, is, is that reversal with the chair. The pit stop was short-lived, and we're back to live action. Joe Giratni tried to send the pass in, and it's broken up neatly by Philippe Newton. He'll try and break things back up. 18-10 to go here in the first half. Abu Kanate connecting. And that, that's not his, his uh, forte. He's usually around the basket and, and knocking that ball loose. He's looking for turnovers, trying to shake up things. But uh, he's going to hit open shots. An extremely skilled player he is. Score tied at two as Britain tries to break back. Simon Munn sends a pass top of the key. And Giratne inside hooks up with Nigel Smith. That's a great give and go. I mean, that's a, a great basketball play on any level. What you're going to see is Nunn is going to attract a lot of attention. He's going to open up the middle for some of the guys coming through on the break. And there's Nigel Smith again as the Brits force the turnover. Score still tied at two. Our first semifinal game of Gold Cup 94. And some tenacious defense by both clubs keeping this score limited so far. Philippe by good hustle to keep the ball in. Taking a look at these uh, two uh, teams during the earlier part here, they're a little tight. Uh, the teams have had some excellent opportunities. That's right. We've had two good give and goes, one for each team, and, and they blew the layup, which you, you're not going to see very often out here. That's right. I think you're going to see them moving up this time. Is I mean, they're both shooting 44% from the floor. They get about 35 rebounds again. The only difference is France shooting about 61%, and Great Britain 53 from the foul line. But uh, other than that, you couldn't tell the difference. I think execution will be the key. France is such a, a veteran team. They just seem to find a way to win. Nigel Smith, who seemed limited action throughout this tournament, and a surprise starter, just banked that one off the rim. Goes out of bounds, and France will inbound. Picks up Great Britain's first foul of the game. The foul situation here is the same as in it. Woo! Jean-Yves Renault from the top of the popper and ties this score at four. Well, we said before the game that he was the outside, the outside shooter. He's the guy that's going to spread it out. Um, common fouls, fouls committed when you're not shooting the basketball, they build up into a series. A team is allowed seven, and then you begin to shoot the basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Nice pass inside for Mark Cheney. Oh. Off the glass and in, and we were talking prior to this game, this is perhaps the best one-point player that we've seen in this tournament. And we'll get to how this point structure works a little bit later on as Philippe Bai tried to get the layup. It wouldn't go in, and Britain takes over. Bai just can't be missing shots like that no, when you have right. such a mismatch. Yeah. 
and, and, and Great Britain better take advantage of it now. It allows for diversity of players and yet still challenges each athlete in their own classification. Joe Geratney, nice pass inside for Tony Woolard. He's fouled on the play. Tony went right up. I mean, he, he didn't give them an opportunity not to foul him. Once he got the ball in there, he got whacked. He's yelling now. He thinks he's, he was shooting the ball. He wants two shots. Geratney to Mark Cheney, who has the ball right now. As Great Britain tries to set up inside. Tough battle inside between By and Woolard when it comes to able-bodied athletes, but when you're talking wheelchair basketball, it's a real tough battle inside. Well, that's right, and that's the exact same thing that has to happen in, in, in any kind of basketball. Once somebody sets up inside, the best thing you can do is foul them. Joe Giratne just off the mark, and that's picked up by Philippe Newton, averaging 7.4 points per game for France. Gets the ball across the timeline. Abu Kanate driving the lane, Tried to feed it for Jean-Yves Reynaud. He couldn't handle it. But France ends back up with the ball. Canate looking to shoot. Doesn't get. And Joe Giratney takes over for Great Britain. They've got an Bruno advantage now. There's, there's one of the French players down at the other end. Bruno got a fly down. It was important that they do it right away. Here's that basket. That's right. This is the reason why Great Britain is doing so well at this point, is because they're taking advantage of their big man. None is getting inside, and they're just really working with him. France trying to come back, and from three-point range, it's Philippe Newton, and underneath is Tony Woolard to haul it in. Now Nigel Smith, who's leading the way with four points for Great Britain. Back to Simon Munn. Mark Cheney with the ball now. Smith over to Giratne. As France tries to spread out this offense. Neat check by Newton. And here comes Canate. Jean-Yves Renaud driving the lane. Has to put on the brakes. But a nice pass across to Philippe Newton. Can't get that one to go down. And Nigel Smith breaks back for Great Britain. And France just can't buy a basket right now. They're just missing almost everything. Nice lob pass for Tony Woolard. And he banked it off the glass and couldn't connect. 13.30 to go here in our first half. Great Britain better take advantage of this cold spell by France. You know, as, as Rick said, they're not going to do this. They can't do it if they expect to stay in again, the and they're not going to do it over 20 or 40 minutes. Philippe Bay with the three-pointer, and he's shooting quite remarkably well from three-point range for a big man at this tournament. Didn't get that one to go. And there he is again, Nigel Smith, spin move. Guarded neatly there by Canate. Lob pass inside for Simon Munn, and Sumo is checked on the play. They doubled up on him uh, in there. I mean, number 10 and number 12 just laid all over him and knocked that ball loose. France is trying to adjust there, and so Great Britain's got to be ready to move in on the, on the mismatch with the one-man weak on him. And a collision between Philippe Bay and Joe Giratne. Cut. As, we, as soon as we get to seven common fouls, fouls not committed at the end of the half, and that's only because they can't keep them around for the second half. And also, unlike the NBA, they have to call them from the bench, and they have to wait until play is stopped. 12.30 to go here in the first half, our first semifinal match this evening. It's France and Great Britain. And the Brits on top, 8-4. to four. Joe Giratne, top of the popper. Try to get the pass inside, and he does. He finds Simon Munn. Tony Woolard there for the rebound, and it's batted away by the Frenchman. Joe Giratne retrieves. In terms of fouls, the Frenchmen have taken four. Great Britain with just one on the board. Mark Cheney passes it to Nigel Smith. Giratne now. As Woolard and, Man and Munn try to get some positioning inside. Beautiful drive that caused the foul from number seven, Reno. He really can handle that basketball, number 13, on Great Britain. I mean, he. Uh, uh, really moves it around very, very well. Great control of the chair. Smith hands it off to Giratne. Pass inside for Munn. And he's struggling inside from the paint so far this evening. And a, whoa. But I think the people are going to wonder, why don't they block that shot? But I, I know the first few times I watch uh, wheelchair basketball, you're saying, why wouldn't he get it? Because there's a chair in there. 
and you'll be able to see how the defensive players just can't get at them. Well, let's check a look at this foul in here. He just got the drive pushing over to the side. There he goes, out of control. Defensive foul. And Philippe by just popped a pretty pair as we are away. And the score is now 8-6 in favor of Great Britain. Big pileup of players inside. And it looks like France has been called with a foul. All right. I, I think that's Great a Great Britain. Britain. Foul against Great Britain, and that's a tough one because they were in such a great situation with the fouls, and now they've gotten two in a row. I think what you're seeing is that timeout on France. What they said is that none is killing us inside. We've got to close up on them, double down, and they're going to force him to make shots from further out. And now what's happening is none is getting a little aggressive and starting to uh, try to get in there, and he's going to cause a foul. So there's been a lot of action uh, and results for France based on that strategic timeout. Neither team's been really able to click so far. Obviously, both teams a little tight going into the semifinal. Oh. And there is proof positive right yeah. there as Kanate and Philippe Bai get their signals crossed up. Nigel Smith. Smith was fortunate he didn't get a foul on that issue. A long pass for Dan Johnson. He lobs it there for Smith. Sends it inside, and Simon Munn finally gets the ball to fall. That's the bread and butter for Great Britain in this uh, first half. That's right. I think we're going to see a change. Number 10 coming off him, and maybe Philippe Pai get on him, you know, to, to counter that size. Abu Kanate driving hard in the lane. A little razzmatazz, didn't get the, the bucket, but did draw the foul. Just what Jack mentioned at the beginning of the game, Kanate is an incredible force out there just by his movement skills alone. Relief by. Now at the top of the key, it's Jean-Yves Reynaud. Back to by. Guarded closely by Mann. And underneath the hull in that rebound was Tony Woolard. Rick, you played against by before. Is, is his play should be closer to the basket. Yeah, that I, seemed like a deep shot for me. I believe so. And, yeah. and the part of that is when you've been frustrated at the beginning, you know you're going to start to force it a bit more. And now his challenge will be to stay within himself and get back into the game. There's Smith to Munn. Back at the top of the key, Dan Johnson leaves it there for Smith. Long shot off the rim. And hustling after it is Kanate wisely Prince getting ball. in the way of Dan Johnson and the ball simply goes out of bounds. France will take over. That looked like a little bit of a rush shot, but I think the audience has got to understand that there's a 30 second clock up there and the clock was winding down. About five or six seconds. Whoa! Philippe Luton! A bucket of real goodness as he slides in back door and France has shaved this lead down to two points. Great Britain on top 10 to 8. 9.50 to go here in our first semifinal. This beautiful drive coming in here into the basket. Our nice camera angle from behind the bucket. Perfect. Amazing the amount of spin these players will put on the ball because they're flying by the net. They have to get the proper amount of spin to get the ball to simply go through the cylinder. Mark Cheney exchanging passes with Dan Johnson, and he'll take the wing on that play. And more. Uh, Colin 14. Price checks in. Yeah. Now, Colin Price has been playing more. Uh, uh, th this is, is not a, a new basketball player. This is Great Britain's second leading scorer, finally tapping in with just a little over nine and a half minutes to go. Kanate tries to get around Steve Kane, a pretty good player in himself. Sends a pass across to Philippe Luton. Rebound grabbed in by Bai, and he's fouled on the play. It's significant to note that Mutan is a very high percentage three-point shooter. He was nine for 14 throughout the tournament, over 60% from three-point range. That one didn't fall for him, but expect him to go to him uh, if the going gets tough in the final. Shooting two. So Philippe Bai steps up to the line. Pardon me, Jack. Yeah, no, no, I was just gonna say that. That opens it up for Philippe Bai underneath. You know, once you start coming out trying to stop those three-pointers, those big guys become more and more effective. Bai has a pretty good tournament to his credit so far. The sixth leading scorer in the tourney. Averaging about nine points a game. Had a tournament high 43 points against the Netherlands. Got one of his two there and it's 10-9 Great Britain. For a lot of us, 43 points is a career, not a game for crying out <laughs> That's loud. right. And that's including practice for me, Jack. <laughs> that's right. Britain with the ball right now. Simon Munn, affectionately known as Sumo, 
Back to Kane. Gets the return pass inside. Dishes off to Tony Woolard. And Woolard, nothing but that. That was an important shot because Nunn was trapped inside and he had to put it out. France breaks back rather quickly by looking for Jean-Yves Renault on the outside. He elects to shoot and gets it. Bad guy. I mean, Britain's, Great Britain's got to be aware of where.